Batman the Animated Series is almost universally hailed as the best superhero cartoon of all time. In fact, some people even say that it's one of the best TV shows of all time. Now having said that, not every episode is a banger and there are no harsher critics than the people that actually worked on the show. Take the subject of today's video, the episode The Terrible Trio. This episode has the dubious honour of being Bruce Timm's nomination for the all-time worst DCAU episode. It seems a bit harsh when I've got Batman in my basement and Superman's pal exists. I doubt that The Terrible Trio will make anybody's top 10 episode lists. But the worst episode of all DC Animated Universe cartoons? Surely not. I know that there are plenty of you out there that agree with Bruce and that's fine, but for me it does have a few redeeming qualities that just about put it ahead of other lesser episodes. So to kick things off, who are the Terrible Trio? Let's look at these villains comic book origins. The Terrible Trio have only made a handful of appearances in Batman comic books most of them during Batman's light-hearted Silver Age period, where the Cape Crusader went through a series of wacky, often science fiction tinged adventures. In 1958's Detective Comics 253, we meet the Terrible Trio, three evil geniuses that use their skills for wickedness. Each member of the group wears a different animal mask, fox, vulture, and shark, representing an elemental theme, land, air, and water, and they commit crimes based on this theme. In their first caper, the Vulture steals a gold bust of George Washington from an aeroplane mid-air. Fox uses a drilling machine to tunnel into a vault, while the shark sinks a cargo ship and then loots it from the bottom of the ocean. Batman was able to defeat them by identifying their next target, a priceless sarcophagus, climbing inside of it, and having them take it to their lair. From here, he was easily able to overpower them. The trio returned in Detective Comics 321. After breaking out of prison, the trio decide to try their hand at smuggling. Vulture uses birds to smuggle diamonds, Fox uses his drilling machine to smuggle prisoners, and Shark uses trained porpoises to smuggle goods and attack Batman and Robin. Now, in order to defeat them, Batman basically uses the same trick as last time, getting the trio to unknowingly smuggle him to their lair, where he ultimately defeats them with the help of Batwoman. And that's really it for the trio before Batman the Animated Series went into production. When Batman went through his dark renaissance in the 1970s, the terrible trio were nowhere to be seen. In the early 1990s, when Alan Burnett joined the creative team on the show, he and story editor Martin Pascoe took a trip to DC's New York offices where they went through the archives of Batman comics to find inspiration for episodes. And it's likely during this time they came across the terrible trio. Although the version that they brought to the animated series is very different from their comic book counterparts. The DCAU's terrible trio is a group of wealthy heirs, Warren Lawford, Gunther Hardwick and Armand Lidecker, who claim to be looking to entertain themselves by committing daring robberies. These young men all inherited their fortunes and their positions within their companies. Warren's father ran an oil company, and Armand's father that owned an aerodynamics firm, and Gunther's father was a shipping magnate. The fact that they inherited their wealth and positions is an important point. They didn't earn anything in life. None of that money is their money. It was handed to them. Now they're not mad about it by any means, at least not consciously, but I have to think that the way they behave is part of them trying to prove to themselves that they're strong, powerful, successful people, as they call it, the elites, not some entitled man babies that have had everything given to them on a silver plate. If we look at the dynamic of the group, Warren the Fox is clearly the dominant one, while Gunter and Armand just follow him around and do what he says. Even when Warren tells them to do something they don't agree with, like murdering Becca. You can hear them protesting, but their actions are in direct contradiction with their words. They are weak and simple men that had the good fortune of inheriting a load of money, and I think deep down, they know it. Similarly, the fact that they are potentially orphans, or at the very least fatherless, is an important point. Of the three, Warren clearly has issues with fathers, namely Becky's father, Sheldon. Sheldon clearly doesn't like Warren, and Warren resents him, so much so that he decides to pay off Becky's credit card debt and then reimburse himself by stealing from Sheldon. When Sheldon catches them in the act, they could have fled, but Warren jumps at the chance to assert his dominance on a restrained, half-asleep old man. Pathetic. It's not about the money, of course. They throw their spoils to the onlookers to help cover their escape. It's all about power. Wearing the animal masks makes them feel powerful and allows them to be their true selves without fear of recrimination. Not that they really restrain themselves and openly express their odious opinions in public. They are the literal personification of privilege. Compare them to Bruce, who is also an orphan that inherited all of his money and his company. Similarly, Bruce also built an animal-themed alternate identity for himself, but he adds the man suffix to remind us all that he's a human being. The trio's masks are similar to Batman's in that they expose the mouths, unlike their comic book proto-furry counterparts. 
Perhaps they took some inspiration from Batman? Hard to say. The trio think of themselves as wild forces of nature, but really they're pathetic little boys. They'd realise it if they had an ounce of self-awareness, but these men are simpletons that rely on guns, explosives and fast cars. Bruce, meanwhile, has travelled the world to train his body and his mind for his never-ending mission to save Gotham from crime. Sure, he has gadgets and a very fast car to aid him in his mission, but he doesn't use them as a crutch. If Bruce is the ideal billionaire, then these guys are among the worst. They didn't do anything to earn their money, it's all inherited, so they feel the need to act out to prove their worth. They talk about going on hunting expeditions and globetrotting adventures. It's all done just so they can say that they have overcome a challenge, to make themselves feel worthwhile. I doubt they're even conscious of their own feelings of inadequacy, but it's really obvious to anyone that looks at them. The trio despise other people, although unlike other billionaires in Gotham, they primarily prey on their own people the wealthy. Everyday people are so far beneath them that they barely even register, and ultimately that proves to be their undoing. If they had just preyed on the normal everyday people of Gotham City, chances are Warren's boast of being able to blackmail judges would have paid off, but the fact that they targeted the wealthy, the people the justice system is primarily designed to serve, leads to them having the book thrown at them. Fortunately, Batman doesn't care about a person's social status. A criminal is a criminal to him, no matter how deep their pockets are. He recognises that these people are selfish and cruel, not mentally unwell, and he goes to town on them. He clearly holds these losers in contempt. And these elite Delta Bros are no match for him. Shark probably puts up the best fight, but that isn't saying much. Vulture attempts to flee at the first sign of trouble and gets knocked out. Fox tries to use a snowmobile to get away, but it's no good. Without their guns or their pre-prepared traps, they are nothing. Less than nothing, in fact. And that's probably another reason why so many people tend to dismiss the episode. The animation is often criticised in this episode, provided by Hong Kong studio Jade Animation, who had previously provided ink and paint services on BTAS episodes If You're So Smart Why Aren't You Rich and Day of the Samurai, they would also go on to animate several episodes of Superman the Animated Series. And I agree that the animation isn't great, in fact it's really quite sloppy. How many times can Warren's eyebrows switch from black to ginger? And yeah, compared to better studios like TMS and Spectrum, it sucks. But compared to lower tier studios like Acom, I don't think it's that bad. As an aside, one of the galleries I buy BTAS original art from has one of the paintings from this episode for sale, although really it's two paintings in one. I don't know if this is normal practice, but it's certainly economical, even if it does look a bit weird. Yeah, alright, I agree the animation is poor in places, but it's still no way near as bad as some of Acom's worst episodes. There are character model inconsistencies throughout the episode, but one of the frequent mistakes they make is actually kind of cool. In the fight scene, we see Batman chasing the trio through the woods, and his cape continuously varies in length. But I think it looks great at times. Impractical, yes, but definitely cool. And yes, the episode is light on story, with not much action. And I agree that it's one of the poorer episodes, but it's far from the worst. The episode is actually about something. It's a criticism of the wealthy elite and their sense of entitlement. It's also a story about sons and how living in their father's shadows can warp them. Other poor episodes, like I've Got Batman in My Basement, don't have any subtext. From the perspective of a viewer, and not someone that actually made the show, the terrible trio is passable, at best. And certainly not the worst.